I'm just out here feeding the horses this morning. Starting on morning chores. We have these gates here that we need to get installed hopefully today or tomorrow so that we can have this pen a little more easily accessible to get the horses in and out. But what a beautiful morning. Look at that pretty sunrise. And it's warm out today. It's a gorgeous morning so far. Hello again, my loyal, faithful followers. I'm just out doing evening chores, getting these pigs fed, but I have an update for you guys. How'd you do one handed? You always gotta like deke them out. It never really works, but you try. That's our boar, Jimmy. He's a pure herder. Got these girls fed. Just gonna feed our other little boar. This is our junior boar. He is half Hereford, and then a mix of Duroc, Landris, and Berkshire. So he's like a quarter Berkshire, half Hereford, and then the rest is Duroc and Landris. So he's like eight months old, and he's already bred a sow. He bred this one actually. She is our Berkshire. So that'll be his trial run. We'll see how that goes. Okay, pigs are fed. Now I'm just gonna water them. Show you guys our new water system in action. We put some frost-free hydrants around our farm this fall and oh my goodness, what a life changer that is. So much better than hauling water from the house. So look at this, watch, watch this, it's amazing. Oh my God, look at this. Water! And I do not know how it's going to go to the sled. Amazing, look at this. Put that bucket on it and it's filled with water? So cool. Maybe you don't. You haven't had water in my story from the house. Okay. So, I think it's awesome. Today I moved some hog panels around that needed to be moved out of the way for like months now. We just hadn't gotten around to doing it. So I got those out of the way with the quad and then I uh, took my daughter and took her on a quad ride and I was teaching her while practicing with her how to drive the quad. So that was fun. Got to spend a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with her. She really craves that. Um, and then obviously on my to-do list is we need to build some better pig troughs. Some of the pens have the wooden troughs in them that I built and those work actually quite well. We just tie them or we chain them to a post so that they can't move them all over the pen. But some of the pens don't have that set up. So we have this little like trough fishing stick which is basically a long tree with some screws at the end that we use to bring the rubber pans closer to the fence to fill them with water. And it's a pain in the butt, so that system sucks. 
So anyways, we need to actually make some more troughs for the pens, for the rest of the pens. We just haven't gotten around to doing it because we have 50 million projects on the go. And um, this is my own personal rant, but <laughs> my baby has been going through the four month sleep regression. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically they transition from like the newborn type sleep to an adult style sleep cycle. So like 40 minute sleep cycle and then they wake themselves up and then they have trouble figuring out how to fall back asleep. So I've been going through it and I am struggling and I am so exhausted. <laughs> uh, so it's been rough. Anyway, yeah, that's been going on. And then um, also, one really terrible crappy thing is our milk cow, Penelope, got mastitis. I don't know why I had this wishful thinking thing going on in my mind that it won't happen to me. It won't be us. Our cow won't get mastitis. We'll be good. I don't have to worry about that until it happens to you. And then you got to worry about it because it gets bad real fast. So... We've been treating her with antibiotics, up her teat and shots of antibiotics. So we had to like makeshift a little squeeze thing for her to give her her shots because she does not enjoy that process. Surprisingly, I was more worried about the intramammary infusion of Spectramast going up her teat. I was more worried she wasn't gonna like that, but that is the part that she was, she was uh, tolerant of that. So we're done all that, we're done treating her, I hope. I'm going to keep running um, CMTs on her and make sure that she stays clear because we are going to be drying her off in probably a month or two. Um, she's due to calve sometime in April. I'm not really 100% sure when because I didn't actually see the bull breeder, but we got her preg checked by the vet and she figured that she was uh, farther along than we thought. So it's looking like April will have calf on the ground, probably. So we want to make sure that she gets this mastitis thing all cleared up before she goes dry because that's that's when uh, that'll start festering is if we let her dry up with mastitis and I really don't want to lose that quarter so we will get that hopefully under control before that happens and then hopefully next lactation she won't have that issue. I'm not really 100% sure how that happened. Um, I kind of have two theories. So my first theory is that she laid in some poop after we weaned her calf off of her because I think it was the second day after we had weaned that calf off of her. Her udder was disgusting. It was absolutely full of manure and I cleaned it off as best as I could. So it's possible that she just had some bacteria go up that teat from that. Um, we of course make sure that she has really clean bedding and all that, but it happens she just happened to lay in poop directly on her udder of course so i don't know if it was that my second theory is when we bought her she had some kind of mastitis thing going on and where we bought her from they kind of don't really believe in antibiotics so it might have just been festering and they were keeping her milked out enough that it didn't become a problem but when we transitioned her from their their farm to our farm um pretty much right away we had bought a calf and grafted it onto her and we were calf sharing so we'd milk her once a day when we separated the calf off of her and then when we weaned the calf off her completely and she wasn't getting milked out as often that might have just been enough to allow that infection to really fester up and become an issue but so far it's looking a lot better and I'm hoping that we have it got it under control now but I'll keep you guys updated but yeah I really thought we were going to have an issue with mastitis, and I'm really sad that it happened to us, but it is what it is. We've been milking her every day because you have to milk her every day regardless of if you're using the milk or not. So that's been sad, having to go through the effort of milking her still and dumping all that delicious milk out. But the pigs are loving it. <laughs> if you're like me but I downloaded this flight radar app and I just love it because I'm super nosy and I like seeing what planes are flying over us and where they're coming from and where they're going I just find it super interesting <laughs> but that's what's been happening on our farm so thanks again for watching guys stay tuned for another video soon 
and take care. I'm gonna run and see what she does. What are you doing? You? What are you doing? Big chunker. Hi. This was her CMT test. I didn't even have to actually do the test to know it was bad. This was her milk the day before we started actually treating her with antibiotics. And I will say that we did try a lot of holistic natural approaches first and they did not work.